Our folks, a new Pew Research Center report explored differences uh, in how black Americans view social status of the U.S. black population, assessments of racial inequality, visions for institutional and social change, and the outlook on the chances that these improvements are going to be made. Kiana Cox is a research associate from the Pew Research Center. She joins us right now to break down these findings. Kiana, glad to have you here. So I'm in this group chat uh, with um, with a lot of black journalists and media folks and earlier then. They were like, um, we sort of got an issue with how some of these questions were parsed, how they were raised, the whole issue of black people, 57% of black folks saying their ancestors were enslaved, uh, 34% said they didn't know, uh, 8% said uh, they were not. Uh, I saw Nicole Hannah-Jones uh, tweeting about this as well. So uh, just let, let's start there. Um, with, with with how that question was was raised uh, and 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 just and what did you see uh, and, and what jumps out at you with this research with these responses from African Americans? Sure. So that um, question about um, knowledge about ancestors um, came from a report that we published back in April, which looked at how Black Americans viewed their personal identity and also how much they felt they knew about both U.S. Black history and their ancestral history. So the question was phrased in terms of as much as they know about their own history, um, to what extent do they know whether their ancestors were enslaved, enslaved at all, be that in the United States or in another country? Um, and we also gave them the option of saying, well, I'm not sure. So that question was, um, it was for them to evaluate their own knowledge in terms of um, their ancestral history. Gotcha. All right. So um, uh, just give us the, the top line of this um, uh, survey. What, what jumps out uh, that for you the most? What jumps out? Sure. So in this new report, the thing that we felt was most important to communicate in terms of how Black Americans view their position in the country is that they are, on the one hand, have very clear critiques about U.S. institutions. They also have very clear ideas about pathways toward inequality. But at the same time, there exists this very broad skepticism that U.S. society can change, that any of those institutions will change, and that they will ultimately reach equality in the country at all. So there's this um, sort of this twofold um, view that comes out of this, that there are clear ideas about what's needed to be done, but also broad um, pessimism that any of it will actually happen. Okay. Uh, reparations, one of the questions y'all asked about? Yes. And so what, we asked, what was like, the response? So we found that nearly 80 percent of black adults felt that descendants of people who were enslaved in the United States should be repaid in some way. Um, we found that among those who supported reparations, about 80 percent of them felt that educational scholarships and financial assistance for homes and businesses would be extremely or very helpful forms of reparations. We also found that about 60 percent of black adults said that cash payments would be extremely helpful for them. So those were some of the questions that we asked. We also wanted to know, um, in their opinion, who bore the most responsibility for paying out those reparations? And nearly 80 percent of black adults said that the federal government bore all or most of the responsibility for them. Uh, let's see here. I know my panel has some questions. Greg, you go first. Thank you, Roland, and thank you for your work. I, I mean, uh, when, I, when I saw the per, uh, the percentages related to the institutional overhauls, and perhaps mm -hmm. I missed I need to read it in, in some detail. I, you know, I saw prison system, policing, courts, judicial process, political economic system, healthcare system. Was education an option, the educational system? We did not have an evaluation of education as an institution in that question. Although about 40 percent of black adults did say that the quality of K through 12 schooling is an extremely big problem for black Americans today. Thank you. Reese. Uh, thank you for your work. Um, can you talk a little bit about how, even though there was a lot of pessimism, rightfully so, in terms of uh, systemic change that's going to um, drastically or lead to equality for Black Americans, there was still a high level of Black uh, people who responded that still believed in the importance of voting and, uh, you know, being civically engaged. Can you talk a little bit about those findings? 
Sure. So we wanted to, our approach to understanding Black Americans' visions for social change went in a few different directions. So we asked these questions about civic pathways to equality, how important, um, how effective of a strategy is voting, protesting, contacting your elected officials, or volunteering for organizations that are dedicated to Black equality, um, and also to what extent is supporting Black businesses effective. And out of all of those particular questions that we asked, about 60% of Black adults said that voting would be an extremely or very effective tactic for moving Black communities forward. In fact, out of all of the civic approaches that we talked about, both um, those that I just mentioned and also ones that are more aligned with Black nationalist approaches, such as all of the businesses in Black communities being owned by Black people, the establishment of a national Black political party, or all of the elected officials in a neighborhood, um, in a Black neighborhood being Black out of all of those approaches, voting certainly rose to the top. Erica. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for uh, this reporting. And what I found to be very interesting was um, the Black Democrats, Black Republicans. And so there were some um, differences there, but it seemed that, um, the, that no matter the party affiliation, um, the question that you all posed around funding for police department was pretty close um, when um, with Democrats and Republicans uh, funding for police departments in their communities should be decreased. It seems like um, there was an equitable response there. Can you talk a little bit about like um, if there were any follow up questions around that, especially since um, given party affiliation that uh, both groups seem to be pretty much in lockstep with saying that, yes, they do believe that funding should be decreased in communities um, for police departments. Sure. So um, there's actually quite a bit of uniformity around um, views on police funding that we found in our survey. So about 35 percent of black adults thought that funding for police departments in their community should be increased. About 40 percent said that funding should remain the same. And about 23 percent said that funding should decrease. And we did ask a follow up question to those who said they wanted funding to decrease. We said, OK, if you want funding to decrease, what should be the top priority for those reappropriated funds? And 40 percent of black adults said that those reappropriated appropriated funds should go to medical services, mental health services, and social services. But to your point, there is very little variation in that um, in how those results parse out across all demographics of Black Americans that we surveyed. There is very little variation in terms of the majority of Black Americans want funding to stay the same or increase, and only about a quarter say that it should decrease. Thank you for your work. Thank you. Anybody got a follow-up? Yeah, yeah, I'll ask a quick follow-up. Uh, this this whole crafting of this reparations question around those being enslaved in the United States being, I, I am firmly against this lineage-based argument, although I understand legally why it would be perhaps the best strategy, even as it would probably even fail legally in terms of legal challenge. But I'm wondering in terms of remedy, how do you contrast this question around lineage-based reparations with the idea of institutional remedies, i.e. scholarships? Is your sense that the same people who might say that people who are descended from Africans who were enslaved in the United States should be getting reparations exclusively would want to preclude other Black people from receiving benefits, say, for example, like educational scholarships? Well, we, in this particular survey, we don't have data on whether or not people should be excluded from reparations programs. What we really wanted to measure um, was support for reparations overall. We also wanted to measure the extent to which people thought various forms would be effective and who bore responsibility. And we also, um, the final question that we asked in that reparations um, set of questions was about the likelihood that you would see reparations in your lifetime. And very few black adults thought that they would. So we did not ask questions about exclusion or inclusion criteria for um, reparations, only support and forms and um, responsibility. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, then. Well, Ken, we certainly appreciate it. Thanks a bunch. Where can people go to read the full report? 
Sure. If you want to check out our full report, you can go to pewresearch.org slash Black Voices Politics, and you'll be able to read the full report and also look at some of our other work on Black Americans. All righty. We appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, folks, back to our Mark unfiltered video in just one moment. Can you believe the nerve of these Republicans? They only want to block progress for our community. They talk about cutting Medicare and Social Security. They played politics with veterans' health care. They voted against the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act and funding for our HBCUs and against lowering prescription drug costs for our seniors. These Republicans keep trying hard to stand in the way, but President Biden, Vice President Harris, and Democrats won't let them. They are delivering for us. The Democratic National Committee is responsible for the content of this advertising. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in Black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Checks and money orders go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037 0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com.